How are you today? We're back with another episode of Building a Dungeon. This is episode 32, and today we're going to be building the Torture Chamber of the Dungeon. Stay tuned until the end of the video to see all the fine little details about how I went about building this dungeon room. So this is one of the rooms that we built in a previous episode. And if you want to check out the 31 previous videos, then feel free to watch through the series after watching this video. So I will have a playlist linked at the end of this video. So just finish this video and then you can watch that. I knew before I started this room that I actually wanted a whole bunch of wood in this room. I also knew that I wanted to work with foam. And the foam I'm working with today is high grade XPS foam that you use for crafting. It's similar to the foam that you would use in insulation, but it's just like a little bit more dense and it takes impressions a lot easier. You can find it at like crafting websites or art websites. I use dickblick.com to source mine and I don't have any affiliate links or anything like that, but I will try to link it down in the description so that you can get your own. I'm just going to cut a bunch of strips using my Proxon hot wire table. Then I proceed to texture both sides of each sheet with a wire brush. This will give the pieces a wooden looking texture. After that I start cutting all the pieces into narrower strips, making planks of wood. I cut a whole stack of strips all at once, that way it just saves me a little bit of time and I don't have to go each individual one because that gets kind of annoying after a while. Then I texture the rest of the sides with my wire brush. And I'm left with a variety of wooden planks to build with. Notice that I have several different widths and thicknesses to work with. This will help me get more variety when I'm building the wooden torture equipment in the tables that we're going to build. I started off this venture by building the main focus of the room, and that was the rack. I did a little bit of research before coming up with this design, so I wasn't just winging it. I'm not too familiar with torture equipment and things like that, so I was kind of intimidated by doing this room. But regardless, I did the research and I found a torture device that I liked, and I started building it. So I just pieced the wood together with glue and pieces of paper clip. The paper clip actually made for really good nails. I'm definitely going to remember that and try using the paper clips to attach things again in the future. I also use the paper clips as pins to hold together the legs of the torture device in place. I added a variety of wooden planks to the bottom of the table just to give it a little more detail. No real function to those pieces, but I wanted to make it look like they did have some sort of function. So I added just random pieces to the bottom. So then I wanted to add some wooden wheel cranks and gears to the build. I did that by making an indentation in one of my planks of wood with a sharpie lid. Then cutting it to shape. I add those wheels to a toothpick. And wrap it with some hemp macrame twine. And glue it in place. I then make some small nooses with the same twine and add them to the build. Then I made a couple simple tables out of my plank. I used a similar technique, so no need to go into too much detail. I added various bits to the tables. Basically, I just added pieces of toothpick and twine as well as a little wooden box placed on one of the tables. Also, a swivel used for fishing. That way, we can have some sort of hook device to torture people with. And I actually thought I'd filmed this, me building these, but 
I don't know, I had an issue pressing the record button on my camera while I was doing this, so forgive me for I have sinned. Anyway, I was about to start painting everything, but I decided that it looked a little too neat and too new to match the dungeon. So I cut chunks out of some of the planks and added deeper grains and gouges with a toothpick and the wire brush. I then painted these pieces with a liberal coat of black paint and PVA glue. You can use Mod Podge and black paint as well. This will stick everything together nicely as well as harden everything up. I'm using a toothpick stuck on the bottom of each piece to help me handle these small sculptures. And after that coat dries, I paint all the wood. I decided to give a bit of variety to the planks by using three different colors. Specifically, I'm using Green Brown in Iraqi Sand by Vallejo and Bloodless Skin by Reaper. I basically just did like a checkerboard of different colors and made sure that no color was touching each other as much as I could. That way I just added a little bit of variety and interest to each piece. And it looks like this when I finished base coating all the wood. And then I touch up all the rope and random bits with black paint. I then paint the rope with a layer of Vallejo ivory and leave the rest of the bits black for now. For some reason I forgot to hit record again a couple times and you missed me dry brushing everything with a coat of ivory as well as spilling my burnt umber and water mixture all over my desk. Spilled or not, I used that burnt umber mix to add a nice brown wash to all the pieces and really bring out the wood. And when the wash dries, I paint all the metal bits with some Vallejo oily steel and a brass. I just alternate between the two different colors of metal. I go from oily steel to brass without even rinsing out the brush and it just kind of wet blends everything together. It makes the metal look a little bit old. Then I use the dank effects that I mixed up in a previous video to add some mold to the wood as well as make it match the rest of the room. At this point, I decided there was still something missing so I started adding some old blood to the room. I didn't want the blood shiny or anything, so I just mixed some burnt umber ink into some crimson ink and spattered the brownish red ink all over my pieces. I did the same to the room. I even dabbed my finger in spots to make things look a little bit more gory. Then I arrange the pieces how I think they'll look good and proceed to glue them to the room with some white glue. If you're getting anything out of what you've been watching, then don't forget to like this video. That not only boosts my self-esteem, but it also helps get the video out to other crafters like you and me. And this is what we turned up with. <laughs>